Hello Truth Seekers and welcome back to our channel where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. It's your favorite neighborhood critic back again with another hot take. Buckle up because today we're diving into some royal drama that's got me more fired up than a 4th of July barbecue. That's right, we're talking about the latest shenanigans from our favorite spotlight hungry ex-royals, Harry and Meghan. Oh boy, where do I even begin with these two? Now before we get into it, let me just say, I've always tried to give these two the benefit of the doubt. I mean, who hasn't had some family drama, right? But folks, there comes a point where enough is enough, and I think we've officially reached that point. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now, there I am, minding my own business, scrolling through my feed, when bam, another Harry and Meghan interview pops up. At this point, I'm thinking, what could they possibly have left to say? Well, apparently a lot, and let me tell you, it's got me seeing red. This time, they're on CBS talking about mental health and suicide. Now, don't get me wrong, these are important topics that deserve discussion. But here's the thing, it feels like every time these two open their mouths, it's to drag the royal family through the mud again. Let's rewind a bit. Remember when they first left the royal family? They said they wanted privacy, right? They wanted to escape the spotlight and live a normal life. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but last time I checked, doing high-profile interviews isn't exactly laying low. It's like they've got some kind of allergic reaction to not being in the news. Now, Megan's out here saying there's still more to discuss about her struggles. And I'm sitting here thinking, honey, what haven't you discussed at this point? I mean, we've had the Oprah interview, the Netflix series, the book. It's starting to feel less like healing and more like a never-ending PR campaign. And let's talk about timing for a second. Just when things seem to be calming down in the royal sphere, here they come, stirring the pot again. It's like they've got a sixth sense for when the spotlight's shifting away from them. Oh, people aren't talking about us? Quick, schedule another interview. But here's what really gets my goat. While Harry and Meghan are out here doing their best to keep the drama alive, the rest of the family is just trying to do their jobs. Take Queen Camilla, for instance. This woman, at 77 years old, is out here supporting the Team GB at the Olympics. She's sending heartwarming messages, cheering on athletes, being a proper royal. And it's not just Camilla. We've got Princess Anne handing out medals, Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, cheering on the cycling team, Princess Eugenie sharing her love for the Olympics. You know, actual positive stuff that doesn't involve airing family dirty laundry on international television. But no, instead of focusing on that, we're all talking about Harry and Meghan's latest bombshell interview. And can we talk about that word for a second? Bombshell? Every time these two speak, it's labeled a bombshell. At this point, the only bombshell would be if they actually said something nice about the royal family. Now, I know some of you are probably out there thinking, but they're talking about important issues, they're raising awareness, and sure, I get that. I get that. Mental health is crucial, and we should be having these conversations, but here's my issue. It's always, always, always back to their personal drama with the royals. It's like they can't talk about anything without it turning into a dig at the family. At some point, you've got to ask yourself, is this really about raising awareness, or is it about keeping themselves in the spotlight? And let's be real for a second. How many times can you rehash the same stories before it gets a little desperate? I mean, we've heard on about Meghan's struggles with the royal family. We've heard about Harry's issues with his dad and brother. We've heard it all multiple times in multiple formats. At what point do we say, okay, we get it. You had a rough time, but maybe it's time to move on. But no, here we are again with Meghan saying there's still more to discuss. And I'm left wondering, what more could there possibly be? Are we going to start hearing about arguments over who ate the last biscuit at tea time? Because at this point, that's about all that's left unexplored. And here's another thing that really is starting to grind my gears. Every time they do one of these interviews, it's like they're poking a hornet's nest with a stick. They stir up all this drama, all these headlines, and then they have the audacity to complain about the media attention. It's like, come on guys, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You know who's not complaining about media attention? Queen Camilla. She's out here doing her job, supporting British athletes, being a positive force. And what does she get for it? Her message of support gets overshadowed by yet another Harry and Meghan drama fest. And let's talk about the impact this is having on the rest of the family for a second. Can you imagine trying to go on about your daily life, 
doing your royal duties, all while knowing that at any moment your grandson or nephew might pop up on TV to air more grievances. It must be exhausting. But you know what? The rest of the royals are handling it with grace. They're keeping calm and carrying on, as the Brits say. They're focusing on their work, on supporting causes they believe in, on representing their country. And I think that speaks volumes. Now I know some of you might be thinking, but they're just telling the truth, and sure, everyone has the right to share their story. There's a difference between sharing your truth and turning your family drama into a never-ending soap opera for public consumption. At some point, you've got to ask yourself, what's the end game here? What are Harry and Meghan hoping to achieve? Because from where I'm sitting, it looks less like healing and more like a vendetta. And let me tell you, holding on to anger like that, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It's not healthy, folks. And let's not forget, while all this drama is unfolding, there are actual issues in the world that could use some attention. We've got climate change, economic struggles, global conflicts, but no, let's all focus on whether or not someone in the royal family said something mean five years ago. I mean, come on. These are grown adults we're talking about. At what point do you just move on, build your own life, focus on your own family? Because let me tell you, if I spent as much time talking about my family drama as these two do, I wouldn't have any time left to actually live my life. And here's another thing. Think about their kids for a second. Archie and Lilibet. What kind of example is this setting for them? That it's okay to air all your family's dirty laundry in public? That holding grudges and constantly rehashing old hurts is a healthy way to live? I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of lesson I'd want to teach my kids. Now I know some of you might be saying, but they're just trying to break the cycle of generational trauma, and sure, that's a noble goal. But there are ways to do that without turning your family issues into a public spectacle. There are therapists, counselors, support groups, all sorts of resources that don't involve CBS interviews. And let's talk about the impact on mental health for a second, because that's supposedly what this latest interview was all about, right? But here's the thing, constantly rehashing traumatic events, constantly keeping yourself in a state of conflict and drama, that is not good for anyone's mental health. At some point, for your own well-being, you've got to let go. You've got to focus on building a positive future instead of constantly reliving the negative past. But it seems like Harry and Meghan are stuck in a loop, unable or unwilling to move forward. And you know what? I think that's the real tragedy here. Because despite all the drama, despite all the interviews and books and Netflix specials, they don't seem any happier. They don't seem at peace. At the end of the day, isn't that what we all want? To find some peace and happiness in our lives? But instead, they're caught in this cycle of drama and attention-seeking. And I've gotta say, it's just getting old. It's getting tiresome. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say enough is enough. It's time to move on, Harry and Meghan. It's time to focus on building your own legacy instead of tearing down your families. It's time to start making headlines for your own accomplishments, not your grievances. It's time to show the world that you are more than just ex-royals with an axe to grind. Because let me tell you, the world's got enough negativity as it is. We don't need more drama, more conflict, more he said, she said. We need positivity. What we need is people using their platform for good, not for settling scores. So here's my challenge to Harry and Meghan. Prove us wrong. Show us that you're more than just this never-ending family drama. Use your voices to uplift, inspire, to make a real difference in the world because right now, all you're doing is adding to the noise. And to the rest of the royal family, keep doing what you're doing. Keep supporting your causes. Keep representing your country with grace and dignity because that, my friends, is what royalty truly looks like. As for the rest of us, well, maybe it's time we stop feeding into this drama because it's time we focus our attention on the people who are actually trying to make a positive difference in the world because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. So there you have it, folks. That's my take on this whole royal mess. I know it's a hot topic, and I'm sure some of you might disagree with me, and that's okay. That's what makes these discussions interesting. But I think we can all agree on one thing. This drama has gone on long enough. It's time for something new. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.